Good morning and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariah. Today is the day the Lord has made our rejoice and be glad in it and I am super excited to have you back for another video. So let's jump right into it. Today we will, today we will be discussing some of the things that will either allow you or prevent you from entering into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and that is important because everyone believes that if generally they are a good person, they will die and they will go to heaven. Some people don't believe in heaven. Some people, I don't know. Beliefs can be everywhere. But today we just want to go ahead and set the record straight and let everybody know exactly what it is going to take to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And so I have compiled a list of Bible verses. It's not all inclusive. I'm sure there are a plethora of others. Just to give you um, some background information and some general information so that you have a clear understanding about what is go what it is going to take to see the king and live in heaven, right? Because that is the ultimate goal. We all want to go and make it into heaven and live eternal life with God and Jesus. So let's get started with our first several Bible verses. I have my list right here. And... Um, the first Bible verses I have, I'm going to pull them up for you, are about the actions and behaviors that will permit you to enter into the kingdom of heaven and live there eternally. So let's start with our first Bible verse, which is John 3 and 3. So it says, Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So, our first requirement for entering into the kingdom of heaven is to be born again. And you may have never heard of that term before. It is possible that you have. But let me just shed a little bit of light on what it means to be born again. A lot of times when you see Jesus speaking about uh, the things of heaven, he is speaking about heaven in a spiritual manner because heaven is in fact a spiritual kingdom heaven is not somewhere where you can pick up a map map and geographically find it located on that map heaven is a spiritual place and so this rebirth or this concept of being born again it simply means something that takes place spiritually so um a spiritual rebirth so something that is going to take place on the inside of you and not um, on the outside of you. So you're not going to become a baby again, but spiritually on the inside, you're going to become a brand new person. And how do you do that? You do that by transforming your mind and renewing yourself, transforming those thoughts, feelings, and emotions that are not like God into thoughts feelings and emotions that are in line with the word of god so if you have bad thoughts negative thoughts or anything like that you want to cast those thoughts down and replace them with good thoughts we learn there are a series of things that you should think on and set your mind to and so when you have any type of negative thought or emotion, think of these things instead of those negative thoughts and emotions. You pray for righteousness and you pray to be in line with the will of the Father and you will become born again. It is a process that is not instantaneous, but it is a process, it is a transformation that takes place gradually. And so you have to continue to pray about it and work on it. And so we are going to go to our next Bible verse. We have Romans 12 and 2, which tells us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the new renewing of the mind. So, and Peter, 1 Peter 1, 22 through 23, which says, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, you have been born again. And so that just brings us back to John 3, which if you combine them all together and bring it all to one simple conclusion, you will understand that 
if you transform your mind and you purify yourself of anything that is not like God, any thought, emotion, feeling, desire that is not like God, and become purifi purified, then you are considered born again and thus eligible to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the three of those will go hand in hand. We have Mark chapter 9 verse 47 which says if your eye causes you to stumble pluck it out it is better for you to enter the kingdom of god with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell so while we do not want to go about dismembering our body parts we do want to take this into consideration right because it has to have some type of significance if god wanted it to be in the bible is if there is anything that is causing you to choose unrighteously, to make unrighteous decisions, cut them out of your life because those decisions that you are making will prevent you from entering into the kingdom of God and will prevent you from receiving your inheritance of everlasting life. And that is what you do not want. Our ultimate goal is to be accepted into heaven, to have our name written in the book of life, and to live that everlasting life with Jesus Christ and God. So that is something to take into consideration. Let's move on to our next Bible verse, which is Mark 5 and 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, There are several interpretations out there about this Bible, Bible verse. But for me, this one just means that if you are consistently thirsty for the spirit of God, then you may be poor in spirit and if so then you are blessed because the kingdom of heaven belongs to you that is a great indicator that you are on the right track for entering into the kingdom of heaven so let's move on to our next bible verse okay and so we also have another bible verse which is mark 13 through 15 and I am just going to give you a brief synopsis on this one again, which says that truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. And we have another similar Bible verse to that, Matthew 18 and 3, which says, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. So those two Bible verses are quite similar. Basically, you want to take on that childlike attitude when it comes to entering the kingdom of heaven. I want you to be successful in Jesus Christ. So please take these words into consideration. Okay, we have Matthew 5 and 20 and Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 27. So these two kind of go hand in hand. And the verse from Matthew chapter 7 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only the, only the ones who do the will of the Father who is in heaven. And on judgment day, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Okay, and before I begin to elaborate that on that Bible verse, I'll read Matthew 5 and 20, which says, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, let's just touch on it and give a brief summary. So, this one is saying that there are religious people people who have a religious nature about them who do miracles who do works who do things in jesus name that are not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven you want to make sure that your righteousness surpasses those of religious hypocrites you may have come into contact with these individuals they may go we're, we're not going to pinpoint what the, the things people do. You're living life just like I am. And so 
there is a chance that you have come across someone who you can consider a religious hypocrite and for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven your life your the level of righteousness that you have in display one should just come through faith by faith and by your faith in jesus christ and two make sure that it surpasses the that of these people because you want to ensure that you enter into the kingdom of heaven if there is anything that you feel as though you need an adjustment on go ahead and take that to god in prayer and let him know you know where you are lacking what is missing and god will fill in those blanks for you the the walk with god and the christian walk with god and the walk you have to take to enter into heaven should not be a struggle we have god here and god has given us faith in him so that he can deliver us it is god's job to deliver us so while you do have to stand firm in your belief you do have to have a belief and have faith you have to also depend on god to do the rest for you so let us let us continue on and go to our next group of bible verses which are the behaviors and actions that will absolutely prevent you from getting into the kingdom of heaven let's go okay we have second thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 and 11 and because again it is um quite lengthy and i will pull it up for you anyway i am just going to go ahead and give you a brief synopsis of what it says and it says when the lord jesus is revealed from heaven he will punish those who do not know god and who do not obey the gospel of the lord jesus christ so for this particular bible verse i want you to understand that if you are not obeying the gospel of jesus christ there is a chance that that disobedience can prevent you from entering into the kingdom of heaven. So with that in mind, please, first I want you to go ahead and get your Bible out and review it for yourself. Pull that Bible verse up for yourself and then do a self-examination on, on what you have on the inside of you. If there is anything that does not align, align with the will of God and the word of God, please take that to God in prayer so you can be successful. Because God is able to change you. Doesn't matter what you have done, God has the ability to make you brand new. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. Okay, so let's go to our next Bible verse, which is Matthew 13, 36 through 43. And again, I'm just going to provide you a brief summary. It says, The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the burning, blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, there is a lot of information there. But, what I want you to get from this is an understanding that anyone that causes sin or does evil will not be permitted into the kingdom of heaven. So let's move on to our next Bible verse, Galatians chapter 5 verse 21. In this, I'm going to pull it up for you again. And this Bible verse is simply just a summary of actions and behaviors that will prevent you from going into heaven so um please take these into consideration if there is something here that does not align with if there is anything within you that does not align with the word of god and the will of god take that to god in prayer and ask god to be changed so that you can be successful in jesus christ Okay, we have Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5 through 7. This again is similar to Galatians 5 and 21, which had, and it has a list of actions or behaviors that will prevent you from entering into the kingdom of heaven. And so as you read, I want you to first reference these Bible verses, but second, 
do a self-examination take it to god in prayer if you need to any type of adjustment in any way if you're not sure pray about it because i want you to be successful successful in jesus christ so again we have first first corinthians 6 chapter we have first corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 10 and that is just like the 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 first couple i just provided with you but another list of individuals who will not be enabled to just another list of individuals who will not okay so let's continue on with our last bible verse which is matthew 12 and 32 which i'm just giving you a summary says whoever is not with me is against me but anyone who speaks against the holy spirit will not be forgiven so blasphemy against the holy spirit is the only unforgivable sin if there is anything else that you have done anything within you that is not in alignment with the word of god or the gospel of jesus christ then you can be forgiven for that you can be cleansed of that you can be transformed from that and so again please first reference any of these bible verse that pique your interest but second do a self-evaluation i want you to be successful in jesus christ and i want you to know in your heart of hearts what it takes and anything that could be preventing you right now from entering into the kingdom of heaven so yes that brings us to the conclusion of my video i hope this information has provided some clarification on you and has shed some light on some gray areas of your life if so please like and subscribe if you have any additional questions or you would like clarification on anything i discussed today go ahead and leave your comments down your questions down in the comment section and i might make another video just for you until next time bye bye out here plucking y'all's eyes out please please don't be out here plucking y'all's eyes out i don't need that